Welcome to another edition of Forecast Lab. Things have quieted down across the country after an active period of storms from the Great Plains to the Mid-Atlantic. Of special note, the Pacific North American Oscillation, or the PNA, is highly negative. That's an indicator of troughing in British Columbia and ridging in Florida. Here's a look at the current 500 millibar heights. This is up at about uh, five kilometers, about 20,000 feet. And what we see here is a lot of troughing there in northwest Canada, ridging down in the Gulf of Mexico, and that provides a height or pressure differential, which with low pressure, low heights up there, a high down there that allows a pretty strong westerly component into North America. If that was reversed with high pressure up here, low pressure down south, which is what we often see during the winter time, that would give us more of a northerly flow, bringing in cold air from Hudson Bay, the Northwest Territories, and the Canadian Arctic. The current surface analysis this afternoon shows a ribbon of thickness west and east through the central part of the country. So this divides cooler polar air up north from warmer tropical air down in Mexico and the southern tier states. A couple of frontal systems, one in the Carolinas, another in the Great Plains, this one not really doing very much, and a possible new weather system in Oregon, California. But at this time, very weak reflection, just this little pinching of the thickness field. In the northeastern states, a return to winter. This seems to be a recurring pattern over the past several years where you get into May and it's like winter, you get into June, it's like winter up there, and finally they switch off into summer. So yeah, it continues once again, some very strong cold advection up there in the corner of the screen across Maine coming in from the east. Cool weather. 50s for highs all across New York, eastern Pennsylvania, into New England, 60s in Virginia, and 70s in West Virginia. There's the 850 millibar chart up at about 5,000 feet showing that strong easterly flow into New England and further west, an overrunning pattern with the main upper level low across Lake Erie. We've got frost advisories for tonight in the Maritimes, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island. They could be down to 36 with locally down to 32 in some areas. Flood watch for southwestern Pennsylvania in this area here into West Virginia and Maryland could see one to two inches of rain this evening causing excessive runoff and flooding rivers and creeks. Parts of the Shenandoah is also under flood watches. Moving into the Great Lakes, cold there as well, highs in the 50s from Detroit to Chicago, 60s and 70s further south into the Ohio River Valley. In the southeastern region, fair skies, a few areas of thunderstorms from Jacksonville to Mobile. A bit of a heat wave in the coastal Carolinas, temperatures rising into the mid-90s from Charleston to Wilmington. Also mid-90s down into Orlando, Florida, throughout much of the central part of the state. Earlier, the Storm Prediction Center had a slight risk along the Georgia-Florida border. That's been changed into a marginal risk for the entire part of northeastern Florida. These storms are looking a little bit haggardly as they drift south. In the Great Plains, we've had an influx of Pacific air drying things out, and temperatures have risen in Texas into the 80s and 90s. The hot spot expected to be Laredo, Del Rio, and the Big Bend up to 97. For later tonight, we are seeing a return to severe weather. This is going to be an overnight situation in the Ozarks. A slight risk of severe thunderstorms, mostly for large hail, but there could also be some strong winds. In the northern Great Plains, a cold core upper level low in the Dakotas and highs only in the 40s from southern Minnesota into North Dakota. Not much aerial extent as you go a little bit further south. We pick up 60s and 70s in Nebraska, and there we do have a marginal risk of severe thunderstorms, 
And you can see those are already ongoing from Grand Island back towards the Nebraska Panhandle. Warmer across the Rockies, temperatures in the 70s and 80s in the lower elevations with 60s in the mountain valleys. Denver up to 77 with Salt Lake City, 70 degrees. And we head into the southwest region. We have a heat wave ongoing. Most of the lower deserts into the mid-100s this afternoon. Phoenix, Yuma, Palm Springs 104 with Tucson up to 99 degrees. Heat advisories today and tomorrow for the Los Angeles area, the San Fernando Valley, and the valleys inland from Santa Barbara and San Luis Obispo. Temperatures up to 100 possible. There's the current conditions, 103 for Palm Springs and thermal. In the Inland Empire, we've got 91 degrees there around Riverside in Ontario. And heading up to Burbank, 88 degrees and continued hot in these inland valley areas. We don't really have any stations, but still temperatures probably well into the 90s. For the northwestern U.S., I could not find anything to talk about. Mild conditions, we saw 60s from Seattle to Portland, 60s and low 70s across the Great Basin area, and looks like a lot of convection across the higher terrain of the northern Rockies, probably due to the presence of that troughing through that area. Get those steep lapse rates and the clouds go right up during the morning. Little weather system lurking offshore. Let's take a look at the surface map. And there it is. Looks like a little occlusion out there. If I had to draw fronts, I would go probably something like that. And then Indeed is probably what we've got going on out there, but I didn't see much data to support that at this time. And a possible frontogenetic zone out there in southern Oregon. And that's the way things look in that part of the country. In Alaska, a low pressure system grazing the Aleutians, a frontal system well to the south of the state. Wind advisory today in parts of the Alaska range due to this southerly flow right there. You see that southerly wind right there, 55 degrees. Fort Greeley expecting south winds up to 55 miles an hour. That's very common when we do have that southerly flow pattern in place. Most of the cold air, the bitterly cold air in Canada, is pushed up north into the high Arctic. Down south, not much going on. We do have wildfire smoke advisories in the central part of Saskatchewan, north of Prince Albert. And of course, out in the Maritimes, frost advisory, and also another frost advisory out here along the Minnesota border. Temperatures could be down to about 32. So the biggest question that most people probably have is when do we return to a severe weather pattern? Because we're in the peak of severe weather season. Well, we've got cold advection going on through the Midwest and into the Great Plains. Some return flow right here, and that's what's going to help things get set up for the Ozarks. Let's go into this afternoon and evening, and a little modest 20-knot low-level jet feeding up into the Ozarks, and a little bear clinic zone through right there, so that's going to help support those storms later tonight. But also another segment of the low-level jet right there into West Texas along the Cap Rock, and things will pick up very slowly going into the weekend. We get this little backdoor front into the southern plains. The low-level jet keeps trying to get set up on the high plains late in the week and looks a little bit more organized for the weekend. 45 to 50 knot flow across southwestern Oklahoma. So certainly the potential for an active period here come up this weekend. And let's see, looks like things get shut down again Monday and Tuesday, but return flow on the high plains. So that will have to be watched. Maybe some upslope activity in Colorado and Nebraska and not much going on for the lower plains. And I was just sitting here thinking that if I added some mixing ratio contours or dew points for the higher moisture levels on that previous chart, that would be helpful for showing the moisture. So when I get done with this program, I'm going to go ahead and reprogram the uh, scripts to go ahead and do that. So look forward to that for Friday. All right, let's take a look at the forecast going into tonight and tomorrow. There's those northwest flow storms trying to get started there into the Ozarks. And not much of it left in Tennessee for tomorrow morning. 
for the day tomorrow, it looks very rainy in the northeastern U.S. Precip totals, especially along the coast, could run one to three inches from Connecticut up to Maine Thursday and Friday. And continued cold through that area, highs in the 50s and even the 40s around Albany and northern New England. In Texas, a slight risk of severe thunderstorms in north Texas, basically in this area right here. If I could get that painted on. Yeah, somewhere in there. We're looking primarily for hail and high wind with an isolated tornado possible. A big warm-up for the northern plains, a 60s return. Southwest heat wave continues tomorrow. Phoenix expecting 106. And a rainy pattern in the Bitterroots in western Montana as this next wave moves eastward. As we go into Friday, a marginal risk of severe thunderstorms across southeastern Florida, including Miami and Palm Beach. Sea breeze storms will combine with a sheared environment to cause some problems with wind and hail. A broad marginal risk across the central plains, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Springfield, up to North Platte, we could see a few severe storms. Looks like mostly hail and wind at this time, but this is kind of a ways off and the pattern is not really clear at this time. Unsettled weather with a few showers all through this area into the Dakotas. On Friday, we knock a few degrees off those temperatures there in Arizona. For Saturday, a very slow warm-up in the northeastern U.S. Temperatures will be coming up into the 50s and 60s there. The southwestern deserts re recede into the 90s for Saturday, just getting a temporary break. Heat wave shifts into Texas. Temperatures coming up to 100. Across west and central Texas, Austin and San Antonio up to 98 degrees. Extensive rain along this area of frontal lift north of Oklahoma City. So some con embedded convective elements, but a lot of isotropic lift and stratiform type precip. That will gradually move eastward into Sunday. So kind of a rainy pattern through the Ozarks. There could be some very heavy precipitation through there, maybe four to six inches in some areas. And gradually everything shifts eastward into Monday. And there's a look at the extended along this stagnating frontal boundary in the southern U.S. Several opportunities for rain and showers as we get that daytime heating. And of course, on the high plains, some problems there as well. And the extended period, not really clear at this point, but looks like more rain up there in the northern plains and in parts of the central and southern Rockies and down the dry line as well. And that's all I've got for today. I've got a dishwasher that is expecting to be fixed. It has a drain pump problem and a flood sensor that has probably gone out as well. We opened the dishwasher a few days ago and the level was about one foot high and the water just went everywhere. So hopefully we'll knock that problem out of the way tonight. And we'll be back here again on Friday for another episode of the program. Hope to see you then, and thank you for those of you who are supporting the program. All right, have a great Wednesday night, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.